mic stand. Is it fucking up? Are we recording? Oh, yeah. Awesome. They get to hear all this. Good. My mic stand's uh, wobbling on me, so when I go to pull it to my face... It's falling off. Feels like it might fall, but... What a tragedy. But, you know, this is what you don't get on terrestrial radio. (laughs) They never talk about the mic stand. That's a good point. I'll talk about it now. Yeah. As I pull it in. Okay. Closer. We'll see how this goes. If it falls and I have to hold it for minutes, Mm -hmm. it'll ruin my day. (laughs) Then you'll hear hear me tapping on the mic Uh, (laughs) because I'm a fidgety guy and I can't (laughs) not do that. I'm a leg leg shaker right now. Yeah. I never noticed because you always kick me. Oh, sorry. Every day. (laughs) And when I say every day, I mean once a week. (laughs) Okay, God. Sorry. Well... Big Ten is back. Big Ten is back, yeah, with a full slate of uh, blowouts and upsets. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. in all honesty, I mean, you had you watched Wisconsin just terrorize Illinois on Friday night, right? Uh, then you come back and you watch uh, the Buckeyes uh, handle Nebraska. You watch uh, who else played at the one o'clock games? Oh, shit, you watched Rutgers upset Michigan State. First conference win since 2017. (laughs) Then you watch uh, Purdue beat Iowa. First first Big Ten win since 2011 is what they said. For who? Oh, first time beating Iowa since 2011. Sorry, not Big Ten win, sorry. Purdue. Iowa. Purdue wins some games every year. Iowa, I believe, is what they said since 2011. You know what you had me thinking first when you Mm. said that? I was like... has it been that long since they beat Ohio State? Oh, no. <laughs> they like, always do. Jesus, has it been nine years already? <laughs> they always do. Uh, then uh, <coughs> Indiana puts it to old Penn State, says we're going for fucking two. Love it. <laughs> Love it, too. Love that call. What do you have to lose if you're Penn State? Yeah. That's why I was down at my brother's house watching games, and we were talking about that, and we both kind of in agreement of, yeah, you're, you're Indiana. You haven't beat a top 10 team in 42 straight games. If it's going into overtime, you're you lose. Indiana. Yeah, that's the, that was the other thing. Of, yeah. Penn State's going to beat you. Yes. The last quarter and a half, they've only stopped themselves. Mm-hmm. You've done nothing exactly. that can stop them. <laughs> exactly. So maybe get it now. Mm-hmm. And uh, just it up for a debate. I, I like to think that the tip of that ball broke the, yeah. broke the edge before it hit the ground. But here's my... <laughs> My other thing that pisses me off Uh is they had a camera guy. Yeah. Why is he standing on the fucking one? Yeah, I know. Hey, shuffle one to your left. Yeah, exactly. And now we have the exact line that we need. Well, now you're going to, and me thinking of that, now you're going to see college football have the cameras in the pylons like the NFL. Which they do. Do they? Oh, yeah. Okay, I thought they were. Yeah, like the Michigan game last night had it, but it's only the big, you know. Yeah. Mainly uh, like the big games. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. like the yeah, like the, the night game, the, the ABC game. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Then I don't know if Fox or CBS would yeah do anything like that. But but quick overreaction wise, I don't know that it's an overreaction. I think Ohio State looked kind of how you thought they would. Yeah, I I, I mean, you know, it's uh kind of the the rule of everything with football this year is the defenses are just not looking good, mm-hmm. and that's kind of what Ohio State looked like. Of, yeah. Okay. Yeah, offense is put up points. and That's how everybody's defense looks this year. That's yeah. just the way it is, yeah. apparently. I was impressed. I was not impressed with the front four. No. I thought if there if there's a part of your defense that can be solid, even with all of this COVID stuff going on and not getting it, a lot of it is secondary that sucks. Right. Because it's timing, it's coverage, it's talking through it with the other four people you haven't practiced a hell of a lot with. But your front four is your front four. You kind of right. do the same stuff. Every year, year in and year out, and I just was not impressed. I, Haskell Garrett was okay. Yeah, I mean, for getting shot in the face a few weeks ago, about That's a month such a ago, weird thing went through both cheeks. What were yeah. you doing? doing? Yeah, hey, look at this. That, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the only how thing. it had to be. That's the only thing I can think of. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, that's what it had to be. Yeah, but, I mean, like, hey, put a cigarette in the end of your mouth. Watch me shoot the cherry <laughs> out of it. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> that's the only thing I can think of. And yeah, he looked okay. But our, you know, we're, we're we're so used to having a monster of a defensive end, at least on one side, right. that we we don't really have that right now. I think uh, that made a big difference too. Yeah, 
But uh, other yeah, linebackers I mean, look like they have in the last. Yeah, few I mean years Werner, can't Werner really tackle. No, there. Werner was everywhere. It seemed like he needed help to bring the people right. down because he looks like a buck twenty out there. Yeah. Um, Borland is just not good. No, he's not. But he gets all the credit for being yeah, amazing. He does. I mean, he's never there. No, nope, he's not. He's not there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I was happy with. Watching the game, I mean, we won, so the offense yeah. looked pretty crisp. The catch in the back of the end zone was absolutely fantastic Unreal. for a freshman. I mean, that, to have that kind of body control and awareness already is pretty pretty impressive. And that was, I mean, Fields, yeah, looked nice, phenomenal, yeah, accurate as hell. The only miss was Alave the first time he got knocked out. Yeah, yeah. And we're not going <laughs> to act like he didn't get knocked, get knocked out. out. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and then on that second one also, yeah. okay. Mm-hmm. But that was the only miss he had in the mm-hmm. game. I uh, we'll, we'll talk about that right now. The targeting call. Yes, I understand the targeting call. I am not. I am not arguing with there that should be a targeting call. Right. There, there should be. It, it may not have to be called targeting, but there, that's a call. You can't. I mean, we can't just have players being knocked right. out all over the place. The ejection should not be a part of the call, in my opinion. I think that's a tack on. I, I I just don't like that we have to sit the people out, the player right. out. I, I don't like that. Whether it's even on my team, another team, I don't. I hate that because I, you don't know their intent. How many you know? How many kids are out there? Right. Twenty. You know, eight, nine, 18, 19, 20 years old. Going. Oh, I'm gonna hurt that son of a bitch. None. They're just going in and making the tackle. Yeah. I I think because I think that's what the NFL started doing, mm-hmm. almost like a flagrant one and two. That's your. Be, like, I hey, mean. All right, it's a personal foul. Yeah, you know, you yards. just got you got caught in a bad spot, but yeah. it counts as your yes. If you get another one, you're you're, you're, you're gone no matter what. Yeah, and then there's one for hey, this was just egregious. Like this slot receiver coming over the middle, mm-hmm. and you jumped at him and like yeah. a missile mm-hmm. into the face. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I I Maybe understand we need to that sit one. You for that one. Yeah. But oh my god, it just stink. I I know as if I'm a player. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I never wanted to hurt anybody, but right. I, I mean I hit. did, but <laughs> I, that's why I never got to it. play because I wasn't any good. But I, I don't. Know. That's just the way I feel. As a from the player's aspect of it, like, come on, man! It's just how I. You know what I mean? It's not. That's my thing. Is we don't know the intent, right? You know, and because there isn't really there any. Isn't I mean, really if you think I'm in, trying in to a get... half a second that that kid's making a decision exactly. like that, I exactly. mean, exactly. And yeah, make it a fifth. Even if it's the, even if it's a twenty-five yard penalty or a spot foul, right? If you want to make it like pass interference in the NFL, I'm okay with that too, because a lot of the times it's twenty-five, thirty yards down the field. Yeah, make that a spot foul, an automatic first down, and go with it from there. We don't have to sit the kid. And if we have to sit the kid, quit fucking punish him for the next game. Yeah, I don't get that. Quit, Why does he got to go out for a half? Yeah, just of the go, next game. It's just the rest of the game. If you have you're to do done. that, you're just done. Yeah. I mean, I. Well, because that was, was when at Penn State got two. Mm hmm. Well, hell. Hey, that's a big deal for yeah. next week. Yeah, it is. And, and, you know, they were saying on the broadcast of, hey, maybe. Yeah, maybe stop that. Maybe go to the Big Ten about these two of like, hey, look, these suspension wise, these are. Uh huh. You know. I just, I do not like that. I, I, I especially don't like the next game thing. I hate the double standard thing. Yeah. Of the fact that it's all defense, it's all defense. Mm-hmm. The running backs always put their head down <laughs> yes. and truck some safety yes. that way. Yes, but and, but then again, in the Indiana game at the end of the first half, when that running back got kind of knocked out, mm-hmm. they didn't call it on that sa- that came no. and now he legitimately put his head down and went in that way. Yes, of like that was probably the most egregious one. Uh huh. Yeah. And they didn't call it. No. And it was in replay. Yeah, exactly. Well, they didn't say anything on the field, so we can't look at it. Then what are you doing? Mm-hmm. What is it for? Then what are you doing? What is it for? I mean, your judgment call is just as quick as their judgment call, but yeah, yeah. we're punishing them for it. Yeah, I, I just don't, I don't like the ejection and the sitting of the next game. I just, yeah. I don't like it. That's just my opinion, and it's the right opinion. So Yeah, <laughs> I, uh, I totally agree. <laughs> I never thought you were wrong for one second. Thank you. So... We'll talk about the Rutgers upset. Is it really an upset anymore, other than the fact that we have a blue blood of a Big Ten team, Michigan State, which they're always decent in the Big Ten, and Rutgers hasn't won a Big Ten game since 2017. Is that the upset? Or, no. No. Okay. 
I mean, it's a it's a new I coach do, at Michigan <clears throat> State. If it's probably if it's Dan, uh, if it's Dan Antonio, uh, maybe it's an upset. Hundred percent. Well, here's the thing. I was talking with my brother yesterday of like. I think my first thing was like, when are they going to fire that guy? And then he reminded me that he quit. Yeah. I'm like, oh, you know what? I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot that he wasn't coaching anymore. Oh, yeah. He just stopped. He's but, like, yeah, I'm done. Yeah. So with that and the fact that Shiano's back at mm-hmm. Rutgers and it was yeah. the last time that they were relevant at all when uh-huh. he was a the coach there. Yeah. No. Yeah. Mm, I mean, it's not. Yeah. I, I mean, mean uh, I, 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 Michigan State hasn't had a good player in a very long time. I mean, Michigan State's picked probably what to go two and six. Maybe. I mean, yeah, that, that, I really if did. you were going to guess their record, that's I mean, probably going to be it. If they, play, if they it. play Maryland, they're getting a win in Illinois, maybe. I mean, and, and the fact that you, you know, one of those two wins you, you just lost yesterday. Yeah, so. exactly. Exactly. I mean, it's, yeah, I, I I wasn't as surprised by it as a lot of people. I, more of the surprise is like, oh, fuck yeah, it's been a long time since they won a Big Ten game. But other than that, not really. Yeah, the upset yesterday was, was Penn State. That, yes. That's the upset. Yes. Yeah. I was shocked. I was really happy that Indiana went for it. You know, we already talked about I, yeah. that, but yeah, that was definitely an upset. And that's one of those things too of Penn State. They they're in tough. Don't forget about the guys who opted out of the season for them. Yeah. Oh yeah. Kind of big deal. Yeah. Your your best pass rusher. Yeah. Linebacker. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. I mean, so that's. Mm-hmm. That's a big big deal. You know, big that, deal. Y- and they beat themselves. I yeah. mean, it was all turnover. Yeah. Based. And then if you're an Ohio State fan thinking next week still isn't going to be a tough game, you're stupid. Yeah, just because just because you got beat by Indiana and you hurt yourself, right? Don't think that they're not going to be pissed off, turn around and play their best football they've played so far yeah. next week. And, and that's one of those things. That's how Indiana has to win that game. Yeah. In fact, if you win by one in overtime by going for two, uh huh. Um, you know they missed two field goals. They threw two interceptions. Yep. They had a fumble. They had. I mm-hmm. mean, it was just like okay, yep. The, if you have to beat them now, if you go to it, if you kick the extra point. And you go for another, you know, back and forth, you lose. Now, here is my. We did talk about that, but we didn't talk about the other portion of that game. Okay. And uh, I think I've said to you many times watching that Michael Lombardi talk about it like mm-hmm. that. He used to be the former GM, but, you know, just learning stuff on football and how he grades out coaching staff and stuff yeah. like that. James Franklin, mm-hmm. be better. Yeah. Yeah. Your time, you got the ball. With under two minutes, minute forty two mm-hmm. or whatever, yeah. they have one timeout. Yep. You're in field you're at the ten mm-hmm. or the twelve or fourteen, whatever, whatever it was. You gotta be better. That game's over. For sure is. Yeah. Why are you running that well, they got a timeout, we gotta run a play. I, I don't care. Kneel on it that time. Then. Yeah. Make them use their timeout. They, make them burn their timeout. Yeah. And then run the play. And then yeah. Yeah. And then during that timeout, go. They're going to let you score. Yeah, don't. Do not score. Yeah. Because even if you just kneeled it the three times, you and ended up kicking a field goal, you won, you burned their timeout, it, you know, they're going to get the ball back with no time left. Yeah, I mean, what, 30? 30 to 15 seconds, maybe? In between, Somewhere in there. In that range, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's it's hard for anybody. Yeah, you're it's just not going to. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't. At that point in time, don't get beat deep. And he, you know, I didn't see his... Pr- you know, it's presser or anything like that. I, I but at they, some point, yeah. it was probably like, well, you know, we told them not to score. And mm-hmm. it's like, but did you? Yeah. Like, you just thought they knew not to score? Yeah. One of those things? Because that's just, that's that's all on coaching. Mm-hmm. 100% coaching. Yeah. And it yeah. just, you really see it listening to that because you don't, you see, may, they make a big deal of it in the NFL when that happens. But it happens all the time in college mm-hmm. football. They mismanage the fact of, yeah, like they're they're having punts at the end of the half yep. with ten seconds left. Mm-hmm. There, and that was another. You know, we talked about that last week with that Michigan Michigan State game years yeah. ago when they did that. Of like, yeah. it's eight seconds left. How how, how is it to punting? the point where you're punting? punting. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, but it's knows? just mismanagement of of time. Yeah, and for sure, you thought you know, if we score, we score, we'll stop them anyway. Yeah, that's what you thought. Yeah. Uh, you thought, hey, we're better than them anyway. We'll you just, were mistaken. You were mistaken, yeah. And then not to mention the fucking kickoff by uh, where he kicked at nine yards. Oh, yeah. Uh, was that that game? It was Minnesota. Yeah, the Minnesota game. Yeah, Minnesota. We'll go to that one, yeah. That's, that's the next one. Did that one. happen in that game? They kicked a shitty fucking kickoff. No, no, no. I'm talking about... Uh, I didn't watch all the Penn State-Indiana game, so... It was 
How did that go? Oh. Uh, did you see the end of the game? Or did you just... I watched overtime. You watched... Okay. Yeah. So they, at the end of the game, so uh, Indiana lets Penn State score. They get the yeah. ball. Yeah. They have one timeout left. Okay. One, not to mention, they marched it down the field and scored the touchdown and the two-point conversion, conversion with 28 seconds left. Oh, okay. And still had their timeout. <laughs> so, there, yeah. so there's that. Yeah, there's that. Um, but, but the port point being is if they don't get that two-point conversion, mm -hmm. they could have kicked an onside kick and they still had 30 seconds and a left timeout out, left yep. to try to get a field goal. Yeah. But they get they get the two-point conversion. Game's tied. Mm -hmm. 26 seconds, whatever it okay. is. Indiana's kicking back off. They apparently wanted to kick a squib kick for yeah. some reason. I don't know why. Yeah. Kick it out of the fucking end, end zone. zone. Yeah. Make them drive the yardage. Don't make the, them waste the time. Hey, the Indiana kicker? Yeah. Muffed the squib kick and kicked it nine fucking yards. Didn't kick it far enough <laughs> for an true. onside like kick. kick. Oh my god! So Penn State has the had ball. the ball, the forty five yards. Yeah, from I mean they attempted a field goal <laughs> and it fell a one yard short. <laughs> yeah, so you it, fucked yourselves. In yeah, Indiana. it was like yeah. I I completely forgot about that. Of like, yeah. you guys had and a the chance. coach is like, what are you doing? I'm like. Yeah. Just let him kick, kick the it. fucking ball. Yeah. Tell him to kick it out of bounds. They get it to 35. There's, yeah. You know, there's no time. They have no uh -huh. timeouts. Exactly. Yeah. Make them. Well, anyway, kick make them, them do something. Make them drive the whole fucking length of the field. And why are we acting like the squib, squib kick is some genius yeah. thing that nobody's thought of? Like, they never make a return from that. Well, really? Because it seems like they always have the ball around the 45 after you do it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Which uh, is 20 more yards farther than you would if you just yeah, kick it farther. Just kick it out of the end zone. Division yeah. one kickers. Kick it, kick out, it out of the end, end zone. zone. Yeah. I mean. Can't be, I mean, if you're a division one kicker, it can't be that hard. No. If, if it is, you're not a division one they kicker. They kick from the 40, don't they? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, if you can't kick 60 mm -hmm. fucking yards. I mean, especially in that. Yeah. With that amount of time. Penn State doesn't get any, in. Anywhere near the goal line, they're probably told to fair catch it. Uh-huh. I mean, yeah. just because, hey, we can't burn eight seconds. Exactly. You're trying to, you trying to do something. run and get to the 30. Yeah. I mean, it's already going to be at the 25 anyway. So. Yeah. 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 So that was the interesting thing. Okay. I, I oh, like uh, yeah. They, no, I didn't yeah, see you, that. If part. you didn't see that. Yeah. Like, what the fuck, fuck was that? What the fuck was that? Yeah. Yeah. All right. But uh, the Michigan Minnesota game. Yeah. Minnesota not having their kicker. That was uh -huh. bad to watch. Yeah. Yeah. When they it, yeah. when I first tried saw them punt from uh -huh. their own territory and the guy kicked it to the thirty five. Yep. Like, well, this is this is not this good. problem. Yeah, because you're <laughs> not getting any kind of field possession. I did not like. I did not, and I understand why he did it because the kicker was out. I did not like him throwing out all the stops so early. Right. Like, it, they were down. 17 to 28 in the yeah. second quarter with like seven minutes left in the second quarter and they run that fake punt. Yeah. Dude, just punt the ball as far as that guy can punt it and let you and let them work down the field. And what if they score, they score, but at least you didn't give them a short yardage right. field. You were, you, you were down 11 with seven minutes left. You were fine. You were fine. You were fine. It's the second quarter. Yeah. You, I mean, two possessions, you're fine. Punt and, the ball. And that's the one thing, too, especially because they've already seen your punter. I got to assume that the coaching staff's on high alert. Hey, this he, guy can't kick the ball 20 fucking yards. Exactly. So they might just go for it. Exactly. So. They might just go for it. And he can't kick the ball very well. Let's stack the fucking line and see if we can get one. Yeah. Let's see if we can get one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that game, soon as it, uh, what, when the quarterback kind of got sacked and it popped right into the, yeah, <clears throat> for a touchdown. Yeah, that was sweet. That was, that was pretty cool. That was awesome. It couldn't have been any more perfect. No, I love it. But as soon as that happened, I'm watching, I was like, ah, this game's kind of over. Because uh -huh. that was when something like that happens yeah. minute, to a Minnesota, uh -huh. they're just not winning the no. game. No, and, and, they, I, and I think Minnesota is going to may, maybe potentially win the rest of their games. I don't know. The way they look, because he was one, they were one of the ones that didn't want to play this year. Yeah. Yeah, and they kind of looked like it a little bit. A little bit. Like, mm -hmm. I don't feel like rowing the boat. Yeah. <laughs> did you see the corn they were maze just though? Good motor. <laughs> did see you, what? Did you see the corn maze? No. That in Minnesota, there's like you know we have corn maze around here for the fall time to go walk right. through. Well, one you know from the jumbo looking down, 
it's spelled row the boat with like in the shape of a of a boat and oars yeah. and stuff. I'm like, you know, how hard was that to do? It takes a while. That's what I mean. Like, I could you just plow the field. Well, you know what? Probably not as long as you would think. Yeah, because I assume it obviously has something to do with the, with the school. Yeah, probably. I mean, and it's probably part of the project that they just GPS it. And they yeah. just have a little combine uh-huh. that goes out there with the GPS. Yeah, so probably. Like, yes. Yeah, probably didn't take all that long at all. <laughs> probably actually. not in in the sense of things, but still, though, like dumb, cool though. I mean, because yeah. corn, because corn's cool. Corn is cool. Ooh, yeah, corn is corn cool. mazes are doubly cool. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna cover it in maize. <laughs> Oh god. So yeah, I mean the Big Ten. I I think other than the fact that Indiana beat Penn State and maybe some people the Rutgers game, it kind of ended up how we thought it was. Yeah. My Northwestern won. Good job, Pat. Yeah. That's my second favorite Big Ten team. Is it? I love. I, I I'm a huge fan of Pat Fitzgerald. Just am. He just seems like he'd be an okay guy. I I have the, I have the respect for him, opposite of why I have the disrespect for Notre Dame. It's for the same exact reasons, just on the opposite side of it. Right. Nobody has any expectations for Northwestern, yet they nope. win nine to ten games a year yep. with a harder recruiting basis than right. what Notre Dame does. And Notre right. Dame sometimes doesn't win nine to ten games per year. That is always the thing with Notre Dame. It's like, well, their academics are so stringent. It's like, well, fucking Notre Dame's worse. Yeah. Stanford's or, worse. I mean. Yeah. Or Northwestern. Northwestern, and I was like, yeah. It's harder to get into those schools. What, mm-hmm. what the fuck are you guys talking yeah, exactly. about? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I, and that, that's, but he's been there for so long. I mean, he has probably has fucking tenure by now. But oh yeah. But still, though, I mean, he wins all the time for nothing. Yeah. I mean, you may get a couple good players every once in a while, you know, but still, yeah, good job. Yeah. Yeah. Good for them. Mm-hmm. And it's always harder than hell to play them at night sometimes, and I have no idea why. It is. <laughs> I don't. I wonder if it's just. I wonder if the wind and stuff, you know, when you yeah. play them, because it's always it, yeah. when you're at at Chicago. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wonder if that could have something to do with it. it. And it seems like they're always like down in like that lower it's bowl. bowl. It's in the bowl, yeah. and it probably just fucking spins. And a lot of it is, hey, it's a night game against fucking Northwestern. Uh-huh. You know, but they're just so gritty and tough, like Pat Fitzgerald. Because I yeah. remember, I mean, I don't remember watching him play. I'm not that old, but I remember I watching. <laughs> But I've seen like you know highlight tapes of him. Yeah. And I'm like he was a mean bastard. Oh I yeah, mean, he was good. They're a good team. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. That was a. Uh, I can't remember. Did they win the Rose Bowl or did they just go to the Rose Bowl? I mean, they won the Big Ten. Yeah, which you know is at that an anomaly in itself. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Michigan hadn't done that in however long. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so that's tough. <laughs> oh god. Uh, but I mean, the rest of the games are kind of how you thought they would go. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think you're getting a lot of that. I mean, there's going to be some upsets, but I don't even know if you call them upsets anymore more because of all the shit that's everything happened. that's going down. Yeah. I, I will. I'll say this. I was super fucking mad. I watched the old Miss Auburn game. Yeah. Um, cause I just want to see Auburn lose some more. And I, Oh, are you on you don't like the Gus? I don't, I never really liked Auburn and I don't like the fact, I don't like how much hype they Bo get. Nicks get. They get, oh, and he's Bo terrible. Nick, he's a good, He's, he's not bad. good. He's bad. He, what did he throw? Six interceptions last week? Last week, yeah. And then, so, Ole Miss isn't very good either. I, I have a better time rooting for Lane Kiffin because he just is, one, he, I would like to sit down and have a conversation with the guy and just to see what he's about. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I just feel like we would have a fun gun How conversation. How many cheerleaders have you banged? <laughs> exactly. It just it's, I, And I do, too. I, I've gotten to the point, and I don't know if it's just being, just to be opposite of everybody, is like, I like Lane Kiffin. I don't, <laughs> everybody else hates him. I know. It's like, I know. You know what? Guy's offense is always pretty fuck good. It's always decent. Yeah. I mean, hell, he won it wherever the hell he was in Florida. I mean, he put up points against Ohio State last year. Yeah, he did. If I was it FAU or FAU, FIU? FAU, yeah. FAU. Florida Atlantic, yeah. Wasn't international? No. Uh, and then when, hell, I mean, you can say what you want. You can say uh, Nick Saban was the one telling him what to do down there, but he probably wasn't. You can 100%, because I think that offense that Sarkeesian's running down there is next level. Uh-huh. It's nice. But 100% credit goes to Lane Kiffin. Probably. Because he switched every... He's the one yeah. that brought them to that because... They were running the old school shit again. Don't act like they weren't just running it up the middle uh-huh. with a big running back. Exactly. I mean, now they still have that, but... Yes. 
But still, though, I mean, he, he switched them into more of a new era offense, and it made them better. It made them more dangerous. And how, how, how sad was that yesterday? With Waddle going yeah. down? I know, it's rough. That's one of those ones, of, and they'll be fine because I'm sure they have another superstar. Mm-hmm. But like you, li- they list off all the people that went to the NFL, yeah. And you could make an argument that he was maybe the best of them. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, of, yeah. of like that ugh. dude was like he had the route running of Judy uh-huh. and the speed of uh, rugs. rugs. Yeah, ugh. all in one. Yeah, and can return. Yeah, yeah. He was is dangerous. Not to say that he's not going to get drafted, but oh, I he mean, will. Yes, but Did, it was. I mean, especially the I mean, opening kickoff, like Saban said. That deep in the end zone, yeah. He's just trying to make a play, right? Which at w- with him, you kind of let him have to do that, yeah, because that's what he does, yeah. That's and what it is. Uh, yeah, and and he said that, and I didn't think his comments were malicious or taking a dig at him or anything like that. But I say it's like <sighs> you didn't it even you didn't even have to yeah. take it. out. That's the worst part about it. Yeah, but yeah, but you can't stifle guys like that. To no, think that no, every no, no, time no. they touch the ball. I can score a touchdown. Exactly. I mean, yeah, you kind of mm-hmm. you kind of want to help them along with that kind of yes. confidence. Yeah, because you're that dangerous. For yeah, sure. to take but you know, at the one thing, broken ankle wasn't as bad. Yeah, as as Dax. Uh-huh. I mean, even though it was pretty much the same tackle. Pretty much. At least it, it didn't, just wasn't you know dislocated and yeah compound well, he'll be back. Yeah, and, you know, it was just you know I hate seeing kids like that mm-hmm. you know even though I don't I'm not a huge Alabama fan although mm-hmm. I like to watch them play if mm-hmm. they ever get into a game mm-hmm. but you know it does it sucks yeah yeah we'll say this so receiver wise uh Garrett Wilson's going to be a star yeah yeah he's good going to be a star mm-hmm. i uh, they've had some crazy depth at receiver these last 2 3 years college receivers i'm not saying yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah. them are uh, you know Pro type receivers, well, because a lot of them are just undersized. Exactly. I mean, which is a college receiver. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, yeah. they. I mean, KJ Hill was one of my favorite Buckeye receivers, and he's like five ten. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just that, that's, good stuff. He is just, and I said this to my brother after watching him with a couple of those punt returns mm-hmm. of like, maybe not all the baggage. Yeah. This is going to segue into a probably another conversation that okay. we're going to have. Okay. Tell me he doesn't look a lot like Antonio Brown. Garrett Wilson? Yeah. A little bit, yeah. He's always open. Yeah. When you kick it to him, it's like, what the fuck? Yeah. I mean, he just, he kind of has that Mm -hmm. feel to him of, how are you always open? And you catch everything. Yeah. Yep. And I, I, before we segue into that conversation we're going to have, I'm very disappointed in the run game. Yeah. I don't think... I think their offensive line is not good. I don't think it is either. I was very, very, very noticing that. Not good. I don't think Teague is as cracked up as he is. He looks like Eddie George, but he runs slower than every running back that Ohio State has had in the last five years. And the one guy, I I didn't even know who he was. Trey Sermon? Yeah. Looked okay? Yeah, he's that transfer from Oklahoma. Yeah. Yeah. But it was like... I I assumed that they were going to kind of use him in that Curtis Samuel type. Right. Both the receiver running back, but... Yeah, Teague, I just think he's too, I think he's slow. And I know he's coming off an injury and he's probably still not, yeah. you know, full, full go. But I don't know. I didn't, I didn't mind the third guy who came in at the end of the game. Yeah. Yeah, I can't remember his name. But. I think they had another couple. Uh, I know mm-hmm. the one that they thought might get some playing time was, I don't think he dressed yesterday. Yeah, okay. I think he was hurt. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Master Teague, I mean, he's a, you can definitely tell he's a horse of a running back. I mean, he's a big dude. That's why I think he reminds me a little bit of Eddie George because Eddie George just looked so much bigger than everybody else out there. Yeah. And in and, and that aspect. But he was also fast. Yeah. And, Super fast. And for as big as Teague is, I saw him get taken down by the first tackle a lot yesterday. Like, if you're that, yeah. you, you're that powerful of a guy, those tackles you kind of just run through. Right. Granted, he hasn't played a whole lot of college football yet. You know, this is kind of his first time really getting out a whole lot of carries, but... Come on. Uh, but everything, I know ha- we always get back to Ohio State here on this mm-hmm. program, but it's okay. <laughs> They're really good. Uh, it just seems the way Justin Fields threw it yesterday, uh-huh. and then you look at their depth at receiver, it seems unfair. Mm-hmm. Of like, all right, we're going to double up Alave. Well, fuck good luck. Yeah, okay. Because one, he kept getting open. Uh-huh. And two, uh, you get that Wilson guy, and you get this freshman that made this. Yeah. The fact that he caught that ball 
and you could see him look, look down, down at the line I know. and stick his toe over to tap was <laughs> unreal. Yeah, unreal. Unreal. And he wasn't the highest touted recruit. No. There's another Fleming guy. Fleming didn't play. Yeah, exactly. He played a couple of a couple did series. He? he had a couple catches. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Or no, Gee Scott. Gee, yeah. Yeah, Gee, Gee yeah. Scott. Yeah. Fleming did. Fem, Fleming's a really fast one. Yeah. Yeah. That I didn't see a lot from him yesterday. Yeah. But. Yeah. G. Scott is was the is the highest or yeah. highest recruited of yeah. the receivers. Yeah. And uh huh. Uh oh. Yep. Yeah. A lot of depth okay. there. A lot of depth there. I can't imagine if you just go went yeah, did a five wide uh. with all of them out there going. <laughs> Fuck. Oh fuck! <laughs> and then run a draw. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it was a. Uh, I think that's just what I think that's just kind of what we're going to see mm-hmm. in college football this year. Is is, de- defense. is defenses are just not going to be there. Yeah, I mean uh, they're going to be okay, mm-hmm. but they're not. <laughs> seems like every big defensive play is more of an offensive mistake than it seems is. Seems like a, yeah, it, yeah. You know? mm-hmm. And I, I and I. And I kind of get it, you know, how many teams do you see run, you know, the triple option and the read option right. and stuff like that. But I mean, the read option, I guess, but not really necessarily the triple. Right. Or a, you know, a true speed option team, yeah. which, you know, it that was the most embarrassing part. Like, dude, defending that's super easy. Yeah. Is, I mean, le- you know, just, logistically, nobody sees it, but nobody sees it and it's very fast. But if you're the defensive end, you don't have the dive back. No, you have the quarterback. No, and, most and, of the and ninety-eight percent of defenses were because the, yes, the defensive end sucked in, sucked in on the, on the dive I back. Mean, Dude, there's guys for that. Stay, stay to your guy. Yeah. Stay for your guy. That's your we guy. Know it's tough, bur- poor though, yes. but he should be able <laughs> to make that, able tackle. To make that tackle. And you got two two inside guys ready for yeah. it. You know, I mean, yeah, I just that that's the more the thing that I was embarrassed by. I'm like, yeah. no, they're getting fucking just thrashed with triple option and speed option. Yeah. Well, okay. you. Yeah, you let's want, go ahead. You want to move on to the big sport so we yeah. can uh, yeah. we can both kind of say I told you so. Yeah, because uh, I, I remember. I think we called I'm this pretty a sure long we fucking time, time ago. Yes, uh, because it didn't even make any sense that yeah. for him to for for Arians to come out and say, "Nah, we're not nah. going to even try to sign him. He's just not going to fit well here." <laughs> Dude, sure. what you coached him in Pittsburgh? Uh, Brady loves him for some odd knows what reason. They get along fantastically. Yeah. For sure, you were going to sign him. It's yeah. just you needed to know what his suspension was. That's it. That's it. That's one hundred percent it. Yeah. And I, everybody that was out there said, "Well, but they already have Mike Evans, and Godwin. When the fuck are they ever on the field? Yeah, because they're always, <laughs> always hurt. hurt. One of them is always hurt. Yeah, they never yeah. have both. Nope. <laughs> well, they have both at the beginning of the game, and somebody's got a hamstring yeah. issue. <laughs> exactly. And, yeah. Yeah. Now you add this to the mix in a few weeks, but and it, their offense is clicking. Starting to starting yeah. to click. Fuck. But it's one of those things of, boy, you better make a Super Bowl run with what you got That's down there. That's exactly what I'm thinking. I'm like, in my head, I'm like, do they have two? Is it one of these situations they too, too where much. they're too good to make to win the Super Bowl? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I, I thought, uh, I kind of thought that about uh, the, the Falcons that year they went to the Super Bowl. Their defense was fantastic. They had so many weapons on offense. Are these guys too good for their own for their own good? Yeah. You know what I mean. And the Buccaneers have a fantastic defense right now. Yeah, I mean they're everywhere. They're fast. They're physical. They're gonna fucking hit you in the mouth. And now their offense is starting to click. Yeah, uh, you add that Antonio Brown piece in there. <laughs> now, yeah, yeah. Now what? <laughs> oh God. Oh, and Rob Gronkowski has only had like a game that he's yeah. played like himself last week. Yeah, and your running back has had three one hundred yard rushing games so far. Yeah. Oh, so I can run the ball also. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the only, <laughs> even though it's the only way that Antonio Brown could have been in with Tom Brady, because just the way he he tends to get open is if you have other threats. Uh huh. Not that he needs it, but. I'll, I'll be real honest. Mm-hmm. He's a better fit in Seattle. Oh, for sure. When you get Russell Wilson adding another two seconds onto a play, that's mm-hmm. when Antonio Brown kills that, everybody. Yes. Watch him when He's he was in Pittsburgh. Open. Ben Roethlisberger was a slower Russell Wilson. Yeah. He held, he held, he held onto the ball. He, you know, extended a play a little bit longer. Always fucking Antonio yeah. Brown open. And that it goes to show you now, obviously don't follow his career path. Yeah. But yeah. that goes to show you of like, because you see so many receivers run their route and then just stop. Stop. 
he never stopped. He just nope. kept. He just always kept going and yep. got open. Mm-hmm. But yeah, if he would have been in Seattle, that would have been Ooh, something. Been. So now you know, you know how a few weeks ago we talked about when the the front office releases something, it's most likely they don't want it to happen. Right. Remember that was the thing with uh, Russell Wilson, I yeah. guess, with Antonio Brown. I read something where it was. Did the Seattle Seahawks front office throw out there that they were trying to sign Antonio Brown to make Russell Wilson happy, even yeah. though they had no intention of actually wanting to sign him? That was the that was, and I was like, you know what? That makes a lot of sense after we had that conversation of sometimes they do that to get the publicity right. out there. I was right. like, okay, I can see it, but Pete Carroll has never had an issue with wanting to have players who have had a history, a bad history. No, he's he's actually. One of the best coaches in coaching those players. No, for he just he's a relatable guy. I mean, you can see that he recruited people from South Carol- California, Southern yeah. California. I mean, USC is not in a good part of California. I mean, he recruited those people. Uh, he brought in Marshawn Lynch and changed the guy's career. Yeah. He was a couple games from just getting booted from the NFL in Buffalo. Yeah. I mean, he rejuvenated the guy's career. You see that a lot. Him. It just he likes those guys. So that was my other part of not really believing that article. You know what I mean? Right. And it was just even what Russell Wilson said of like, you know, I hope he's a, can come here and grow as a man. It, man of like, yeah. Hey man, like he's older than you. I yeah, think. Yeah, exactly. Of and like he's not your project. He's no. just a he's just a he's receiver. A guy. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That, that was a weird thing to say. But I thought that, so too. You know that's what that's what Russell Wilson does. <laughs> And that's why I don't like him. It's <laughs> shit like that. Phenomenal football player. It's the shit like that. Mm-hmm. Of like, seems like you're judging him. Yeah, exactly. Like, I think I can bring him here, yeah. put him under my wings. Because he threw a bag of dicks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Literally. Literally, yeah. <laughs> Literally threw a bag of dicks <laughs> at cops. Yeah. I just. Or his, or his somebody. kid's mom. <laughs> somebody threw a bag of dicks at somebody. Yeah. Bag of dicks was thrown. Mm-hmm. That was part of his story. Yeah, yeah, that makes it with Tampa. That's ugh. dangerous. Yeah, it's it, it it's could be dangerous, especially if everybody could be healthy towards the end of the season. If you get him at week nine, and let's say Godwin, because I think Evans is back to being healthy because he played last week, he's playing yeah. this week. If because Godwin's the one that's kind of up in the air still. If you get Antonio Brown in week nine, and Godwin's still up in the air, set him to the playoffs. Yeah, set him to the playoffs. That way, when that actually starts, and you may. Right, you may not have a buy because you have to be the one seed to get the buy now. But if you if you don't, then for sure just let him sit and get rested for that time. Yeah, because you have more games in the playoffs now, unless yep. you have the buy. Correct. So you're gonna need him. At least sit him for a couple more weeks. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just the and that's kind of their their that's been their thing even before Tom Brady was there, even yeah. last year. The amount of time that both of those guys were on the field at the same time is was, not as much as you think. No, they just made spectacular plays when they were on the yeah. field, which is why you never thought of the injuries. And everybody else in that division is fucking imploding. Yes. I don't know what's going on in New Orleans with Michael Thomas and all this shit, mm-hmm. but shit's but, not, I uh, mean... Peyton came out and said that they're not trading him, so... W- no fucking <laughs> shit. Well, that was the thing. How are you going to? Exactly. That's a huge-ass contract. Oh, you want us to... Oh yeah, we could pay a wide receiver twenty million dollars a uh-huh. year. Yeah, no, nope, uh, we're not th- trading him. That's because nobody's calling, buddy. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. I mean, I have them winning this week, beating the Panthers because yeah. they're okay. Yeah, I mean they're not good. Yeah, they're okay. They're okay. They're okay, but I I think they get him back. I think you may start to see the old New Orleans back. I honestly think that he's the difference maker. Yeah, I I honestly I swear to God I know it's a it's one wide receiver right. But when Drew Brees can't throw the ball down the field and this guy runs slants and outs and curls better than anybody in the league right now, that's a blank. That's a just his, it's his blanket of security. You know yeah. what I mean? That's, that's just what he has. I think he's just going to feel more comfortable with it. Yeah. And I think that they, they kind of switch some things up. Going. Mm-hmm. I do. I would. Now, I think that if they don't, I'm, I'm not going to be like, oh my God, really? No, I'm just going to be like, yeah, okay. Then Drew Brees is done. He's over with. Put Jameis in, see what you can do. Yeah. Get close to that, anyways. I think it is. I really do. 
I've been reading some articles too, when you know, talking about quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of funny because obviously I'm not a Washington fan. Yeah. It just happens to be that Dwayne has played at Ohio State. Uh huh. And I don't disagree with his benching the way some of the stuff the, sounds. Yeah. Sounds like he's lazy and doesn't care. Yeah. Yeah. But I love reading, I think it's called Hog Heaven, kind of a blog. It's, okay. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I love reading those about their thought process on it. Oh, okay. About going with switching up quarterbacks for a chance to win the division. Uh Uh-huh. And the fact that making the switch and his, the stats are maybe equal or worse than what Haskins was doing. Yeah, I know. And it's like, and everything was, (laughs) and they're, they're talking about all the, it's honestly, it's making me lose a lot of respect for Ron Rivera. Yeah. That he maybe doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. Uh Uh-huh. Because it was like all the counter, contradictions of he came out last week and said I never you know there's there was no timetable uh-huh. for Dwayne Haskins and then in the presser like three weeks before he says or uh, shelf life yeah shelf and life he yeah. specifically said there's a shelf life on him uh-huh 100% shelf life yeah and then three weeks later he's like I never th- yeah there was no shelf life it's just a direction uh-huh. we need to go in we need to keep developing him but then you moved him to third string to get no snaps. Uh-huh. And then you said the reason was his output. And then, but Allen doesn't have, like, doesn't like the have standards aren't the same. No, and it's like, yeah. he can do it hey, man, he wants. Everybody knew that was a shithole down there. And it seems like maybe they either infected you or you're making it worse. Yeah. So please just so put him back in the game. I'm kind of all out on Rivera. Because mm-hmm. it just the way he handled the whole thing of like, he never act. He never did anything like that. Mm-mm. Now, granted, you had Cam Newton. Yeah, I understand that's different. You didn't have a. You didn't have any competition because but Cam Newton. Just was Just like Newton. the way you're handling the situation is mm-hmm. like you, it, when you got fired, it was so professionally handled by you. Yep. And now you're doing. And now it's this. just like, yeah. You you have totally bought into Washington. You're mm-hmm. you're acting exactly, exactly like, like everybody who acts in Washington. Yeah. I, I I don't get it either. I but like you said though. It's not any better with whoever the hell they no. put in because they're not a good football team. They're not. No. They're not a good football team. Need to, well, you know, the division's right there. No, it's not. No. Nope. It's just not. You're going to blow up everything you're trying to build to get a first-round exit in the playoffs? Yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, like, the division five wins might get it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and do you think one playoff game with no fucking fans is, yeah, is the way to go? go? Exactly. As opposed to, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got, and let's try to get a decent draft pick. Yeah. Because we don't have anything right now. And, and that's the other thing. of like At some point, does anybody want to point out that their only receiver is Terry McLaurin? Yeah. I'm a McLaurin fan. Me too. But he's, he's a, a, <laughs> at best third option in the NFL, and he's your number one. Like, he's your only oh, fucking guy. He, he he was drafted for special teams. Yeah. Because he was fantastic on special yeah. teams. And he's your number one guy. Yeah. That that's just it blows my mind <laughs> their thought process down there of like Yeah. Hey, you got nobody. It's just a it's it's a shit show sad. down there. It is. It's sad because you you thought he was gonna bring some light to a very shitty organization. Yeah. And he's just fell right in with the crowd. Yeah, yeah. He's just doing what they do. He's doing exactly the same I feel damn like, thing. I feel like Snyder's got like a hand up his ass working yeah. him like a puppet, you know? He's just, doing the same damn thing Gruden was doing. Yeah. What that ended up getting him fired mm-hmm. of like just talk to the GMs and stuff. Make a decision about what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Put a game plan down and go with it. Yeah. For sure. It, you're you're not going to win many games. No. Do it with Haskins, and if he doesn't win many games, now you actually have a reason to bench him or not yeah. play him anymore. You lost two games with him, and you won one game with him. Yeah, he has a better record than the other guys that have played with him yeah. right now. You benched him after he threw for three hundred yards. Uh huh. One of the things that leaked out, and he kind of leaked it out of like that Haskins was bragging about having a three hundred yard game and a loss. Mm-hmm. And this is the other thing: is the next week, Allen. Has an okay game, you know. Yeah. And Rivera's up at the podium. Com- complimenting. Com- complimenting his stat line in a fucking loss. Uh-huh. Of like, 
Dude, he was an undrafted free agent that backed up Cam Newton. The guy's five and ten as a fucking starter. Uh huh. What are we doing? Exactly. And it has been proven by, and I know it's like, well, those are just, that's just the media talking about it. It's like, no, no, no. But all the analysts on ESPN and stuff, like those guys played in the league. Uh huh. And for the most part, because they work at ESPN, yeah. for the most part, they were superstars in the league. Exactly. So when they're breaking down your offense and they say that your offensive coordinator doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. Yeah, that's a problem. That They're probably right. Yeah. Because they're... I, Orlovsky goes it, off on them. Yeah. Is it Scott Turner? That's yeah. the offensive coordinator. Orlovsky. Calm I, down. I, Calm down. Yeah, but I like him cause he, because yeah. he goes off like Yes, it. I do too. But uh, his I mean, po- And now... Most of the stuff I get from him is off of Twitter. I don't. Uh-huh. I don't watch That's, ESPN, yeah. so it's it's not as going off. It's mm-hmm. more of like breakdowns of like, yeah, you're asking. This was I think Haskins last start. He's like, so you're asking this kid to do this. Now here's your route concept. Mm-hmm. At the top of their routes, they had four receivers within eight yards of each other. <laughs> he goes, "Where's the kid supposed to throw the fucking ball?" Uh huh. And people are like, well, they, you just had to wait longer until they broke out. I was like, no, no, no. 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 That's not how offense is done. No. You can't bring everybody together because you know what that brings? All the defenders in one spot. <laughs> exactly. You can have one guy guard two. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> maybe all four. Maybe all four. But yeah. yeah. It was like him, him talking about stuff like that of like, oh, what are you doing? Dumb asses. Dumb aces. And then as far as coaching goes, obviously Dallas still sucks. Yeah, Ezekiel Elliott for some reason forgot how to play football. Yeah, he, he did. can't yeah, hold on he to can't it. Hold on to it at all. For some reason wearing a sweater. He's got under a, his jersey and yeah, a fucking dome. <laughs> He's got the yips, man. Yeah, and but, and for sure, if Mike Nolan isn't fired by the end of this weekend, McCarthy, I lose respect for you, pal. I, I'd kind of thought, I and I didn't know this till I heard somebody bringing this up. Of how long had it been since it'd been like five years since Nolan had coached in the NFL? Yeah. The last time he coached, he got fired at San Francisco. Yeah. A lot's happened to the offense. Yeah. And the defense you have doesn't work anymore. But we're going to no. do things my way because yeah. this has always worked. It doesn't. It doesn't. No. It just doesn't. Um, For sure, if you are going to keep one of the coordinators, keep Monty Kiffin. Yeah. He didn't even do a bad job. No, and he's <laughs> fucking 112 years exactly. old. Exactly. I mean. But he's still adjusting. <laughs> yes. He's still moving pieces around. I mean, you guys, you have studs on defense, Dallas. Yeah. Absolute studs, and you can't stop the fucking run. Yeah. A team who... Sp- now, don't get me wrong. They are doing a better job of running the football, Arizona. But they are a... You can say a pass-first team. Both backs combined had 212 yards rushing on you. Yeah. You gave up 212 yards to a passing football team. That's the one that got me in the money. Yeah. On my uh my FanDuel fantasy. Mm-hmm. Kenyon Drake? Yeah. Nice. I was big on him. Yeah. And uh it paid off. Yeah, it did. You uh, you won our little one last week too, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. Nice. I think I had Kenyon Drake did in there. Did you there? <laughs> so I think we all won one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is uh, that still going? Yeah, I got it going again this week. Cool. Yeah, we should advertise that more, get more people because it's uh-huh. fun to watch. Yeah, it is. It is and, fun. You know, most people don't know what we're talking about. We're talking about FanDuel. FanDuel. Catch the excitement. It's a dollar. Gamble. Gamble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, ah, uh, shit, where was I going with that? Don't know. Oh, we're talking about Dallas coaching. And just how, garbage. And uh, about the stop in the run and Vizlet. And I never liked him as a player, but you understand how big of a fan I am of Ike Taylor. Yeah. As guests on radio shows. Yeah. And he was kind of breaking down the Steelers because Steelers have just always been the Steelers. Like, mm-hmm. they can run the ball and they stop the run. Mm-hmm. That's the fucking Steelers. Yeah. And in an era where that doesn't seem to be the case, no, it's still the case. It's That's what the, the Steelers do. Yeah. And Taylor was talking about, you got to pay attention to how they draft. Yeah. Now, this starts with offense, but mm-hmm. we're going to talk about what their defensive philosophy is. He goes, you ever notice? Now, they, they get guys out of some places, but yeah. the bulk of their skill positions come out of northern states. Okay. Ben, yeah. college football plays in Ohio. Uh-huh. Antonio Brown, Michigan. Uh-huh. Yeah. Antonio Holmes, Ohio. Uh-huh. All the guys that handle the ball uh-huh. are cold weather college football players because Pittsburgh's a cold weather town. Hmm. Yeah. And it and it and he it was kind of a 
I'm not just pointing this out because it happens to be this way. And he's talking about that when they were talking about Maple Tron. Of, he goes, no, that, that's a philosophy of, hey, we play in the fucking cold. Mm-hmm. And when it hits November and December, these southern Florida guys that mm-hmm. you, you get out of Miami and stuff yeah. don't always work out yeah. up here. Yeah. I mean, I, and the bulk yeah. of the NFL is, is in the northern there. states. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's I like, mean, it makes sense. Yeah. Claypool. I mean, yeah. Uh, fucking Bell was Michigan. Yep. Uh, Fucking James Conner was Pitt. The yep. only one, the only one that you can't say that uh, true about is Juju. Yeah, and he's okay. Yeah, he kind of he's fell special. off. No, because he, he fell off. He's going to be special because you're going to have to start worrying about Claypool. Yeah, that's the deal. Mm-hmm. But for the bulk of it, it's like, God damn, that makes mm-hmm. sense. And then he came in on defense because they were talking about kind of Dallas. He yeah. goes, "It is just the way it is, and you will be told this in Pittsburgh. I don't care what position you play." Mm-hmm. If you can't stop the run, you will not play here. No. I don't care how much money we gave you. Mm-hmm. You will not suit up. Yeah. And that means if you're a corner or a safety. And you can't tackle. If you don't fly up uh-huh. and make a tackle in the run game, you will you will not play here. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what you see with Dallas. Of Yeah. Once they get past, the, the, the secondary doesn't make yeah. tackles. And mm-hmm. honestly, you can look at. A lot of teams. Pittsburgh. Yeah. Ravens. The historically good defenses. Mm-hmm. Their secondaries run downhill. Oh, yeah. And they were talking about because they played the Titans this week. Mm -hmm. And it was like not a concern. Yeah. Because the Derrick Henry types are the types that the Pittsburgh defense Mm -hmm. shuts down Mm -hmm. because nobody else's defensive backs come up and make that tackle. Now, here in Pittsburgh, they come a running. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'll I'll flip it back to to my team. When they played, they played Tennessee last year. Denver did. Denver yeah. played Tennessee last year. Derrick Henry had 86 yards. They they opened up with Tennessee this year. He had 94 yards. Yeah. They make an effort to stop them. Yep. Nobody else wants to. They and D- Denver or Denver plays the same scheme as Pittsburgh. It's a three four. Yeah. There's a you know what I'm saying. It's all the same shit. But you guys have to make an effort to stop that guy. Yeah. Nobody wants to. They're just oh we'll let him go and we'll stop everybody else. Yeah. That hasn't worked. That has not worked. That's what he, he said in their philosophy. He goes, the whole philosophy we had, and that's this coming from Mike Taylor, who's a mm-hmm. defensive back. Yeah. Of, we're not giving up a 100-yard rusher. Yeah. That is what we do in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. And he goes, I'd give up all my interceptions. Yeah. Just to make sure that that running back didn't have 100 yards. Mm-hmm. He said, that's just, that's yeah. what we do. Yeah. And you know what? Even with these guys to throw four or five hundred yards, you'll, you ever notice on the games where they don't have much of a running game, mm-hmm. they usually end up losing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because at the end of the time, if you can't control the time at the end of the game, mm-hmm. you suck. You fucking can't do it. Yep. Yeah. And I, and Pittsburgh's defense is playing absolutely ridiculous. And right nobody now. notices. No. I, I, I mean, don't know how they're under the radar. <laughs> they are. They're under the radar. I mean, the the only person I've really heard specifically talk about them. Coward came back and said I was wrong about the Steelers this year. Yeah, because he had them in like that eight and eight, seven and nine range. He's like I was completely and utterly wrong. I don't understand how he had them there. I was like, because it's coward, and he they went eight and eight last year with Duck Hodges. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you didn't think Ben was gonna make, make a, a difference? difference? I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I you know, and I'm not worried about the Titans either. I mean, no. they they've played. They pretty much got that division locked up already. For sure. so it's, and they haven't really played anybody. I mean, no. they haven't. You also say the Steelers really haven't either. No, no, they have not. But they're still the Steelers. Mm-hmm. How and they're underdogs this week. That's I, the one thing of like, hey, if you want to throw out a pick 'em game, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah. You need to tell me that you're making the Steelers underdogs uh-huh. against the Titans? Yeah. I mean You don't think they're gonna eat that shit up? Ugh. Oh my god. Oh my god. I mean and I you credit Obviously, you credit it to the front office of that standard has been set by them yeah. of this, you know, that grittiness, that toughness that they that they are. You, you got to credit the coaches as well. I mean, and they do a good job of keeping coaches there. Right. You know what I mean? Cow, how long was Cower there? 12 years? I want to say Pittsburgh in their fucking history. Have... Of the whole franchise. Have 10 coaches, maybe? Oh, no, not even that. Like, fucking five. Yeah. I mean, it's... Chuck Noll was there for forever. 
I don't know who's well, before Chuck him. Chuck Bill Cower, I yeah, think. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, honestly, I don't think you're wrong. Uh, that whole thing is obviously because one of my best friends is a Pittsburgh fanatic, so mm-hmm. I hear all these. But it, it's a really yeah. cool story uh-huh. of even how the family, the Rooney got family, the team. Yeah, basically Rooney went on a heater at the horse track. Yep, and ended up with some extra money, so uh-huh. he bought the fucking Steelers. <laughs> That's how it happened. Yeah, yeah. and just kind of just got fell into. Hey, we're family people, and if you're our coach, you're our fucking coach, and mm-hmm. that's, but it it's, I you might have to give that a Google, but it, it's uh the amount of coaches they've had in the franchise history is just it's, it's, it's slim. stupid. It's I know that. like nobody, and I don't, you know, I know a lot of people shit on Mike Tomlin, but I don't think he gets enough credit. I don't think he does either. Like, well, they haven't won a Super Bowl in ten years. Well, a lot of teams don't exactly. I think only, I mean, for the most part, the Patriots are the only ones that are doing that exactly. All righty. Okay, there it is. So, one. In the history of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Okay, they've had 16. 16? Yes. But, well, I but bet it's different one since year, the Rooney's. Two year. Let's see. I don't know if they mark when the Rooney's took. Do you know what year the Rooney's took over? I do not. I don't either. But from Chuck Knoll, where they were 70s. amazing. Yeah, they won four Super Bowls in the yeah. 70s. There's been three coaches, Chuck Knoll, Cower, Tomlin. Yeah, since the 70s. Since the 70s. They've had three coaches. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Now, th- now bring this back in. Dwayne Haskin hadn't been in the league for two full years, and he's already had three coaches. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Think about that shit. You know, talk about consistency. <laughs> yeah, no shit. A di- everybody, they, nobody ever wants to think about it, man. There's, yep. a, there's differences in winning franchises. Yeah. Pittsburgh Steelers, they don't fucking change anything. Nope. One, when they make their hire, they know they got their guy. Mm-hmm. It's not just a flash in the pan. This guy's yeah. hot at the second. Yeah. They got their guy. Yep. I mean, Chuck Noll was there for 22 years. Uh, Cow was there for 14. And Tomlin's been there now for 13. And I want to say, and I could be talking out of my ass on this, but even in that time frame, mm-hmm. Chuck Noll, I... It would never happen today. Yeah. Because I I think him and Terry Bradshaw fucking hated each other. Chuck Knoll? Yeah. Yeah. Like they didn't at all mm-hmm. did not get along. I was like, well, they won four Super Bowls in ten years, so Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But like this day and age it, the coach would probably get fired. Mm-hmm. Even though Terry Bradshaw's way overrated as a quarterback, should yeah. be a Hall of Famer. Okay. His numbers aren't as, you know. I know. I just like stirring the pot that way. Well, I mean, his numbers but, aren't as good as some of the... Yeah, but nobody's he, numbers were. <laughs> no, but he also <laughs> won four Super, Super Bowls. Bowls. But uh, no, I just like saying that shit just because... Yeah. <laughs> I'm Harry sure Bradshaw. there's a Steelers fan out there and went, what, what the, the fuck? fuck? Yeah. <laughs> what did he just say? Because for some reason, even people that weren't alive talk about those teams more than uh-huh. they talk about the two Super Bowls you've won, uh-huh. you know, in the last 15 years. Yeah. 20 years. Yeah. So... Uh, can the Patriots receivers get open? No. Oh my God, it's bad. It's bad. Yeah, it's you're finally starting to see what everybody was talking about of mm-hmm. like, yeah, there's there's not going to be a good team this year. You know. Yeah. It's not. <laughs> not at all. I mean, the Broncos game last Sunday, they gave him plenty of opportunities to come back and win the game. Yeah. I mean, he threw two picks within the fourth quarter, only up by six. Yeah. I mean, jeez. Yeah, I think you're you're just kind of seeing that. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is yeah. just the way it is. Yeah, and I don't think it's on Cam. I mean, he threw an out route. Not to mention, he didn't practice. No, but he so. threw an out route on the fourth down last week to either keep playing or lose the game. The guy wasn't even on his break. Couldn't even get on his break. Yeah, couldn't get off. Couldn't get couldn't get off the the DB. I was like, what the hell's going on? Mm-hmm. Threw it to where he should have been. And right. there was like, oh, Cam made a bad throw. The guy wasn't all out of his break yet. He, do it's you, a timing route. Do you think that they don't have, since we had the pandemic and all the lockdowns, that Belichick couldn't go to the mall enough to find re- more receivers? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, do you yeah. think that's what the problem is? Could have been. Could have been. <laughs> it isn't, he always likes those small, shifty white receivers. I mean, yeah. you had, you had yeah. Edelman, Wes Welker. I mean, he had all those guys and... Hell, he tried to get the Humphreys guy that's in Tennessee. Yeah. He offered them he offered him a lot of money to come and play. Huh, no go. 
Yeah, I think it, it's just uh, if they can keep Cam Newton or anything, but they get they got to get some weapons. But mm-hmm. you're, you're seeing, and the weird thing is, is they'll probably end up making the playoffs. Probably. But it's going to be weird to say that they're in a complete rebuild. Uh-huh. They are in a complete rebuild, probably make the playoffs, mm-hmm. whereas Washington, Cleveland, yep. Cincinnati, Detroit, mm-hmm. all those that go in complete rebuilds, had never won more than five games, and they're all re- and they're tearing it back down. I know it, I know it. Yeah, but that that's the difference. That's the difference because I think next year, this year was a get by because next year they have shit tons of cap space. Oh like, yeah, everybody's off the uh-huh. books. Yeah, I think you're gonna it, it, you're gonna see them obviously. Yeah. you know, flip the switch. So uh, how was the, I'm pretty sure I did pretty well at the Pickums last week. Um, let me look here. I think the only one I got wrong was the Packers. Uh, yeah, you picked the Falcons. Uh huh. They won. Uh, the Giants. They, they won. Lost. Giants won last week. Oh, they lost Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, that's this week. That's my bad. It's okay. It's my bad. It's fine. Danny Dimes though, fast as fuck. Yeah, he is. Tripped and, and fell. Tripped and but, fell, but goddamn. And the the greatest thing was a plus five hundred prop bet on FanDuel that Danny Dimes runs for a fucking touchdown. Oh. And he tripped with nobody around him. He oh, fucking tripped. Oh my and god. Balls. I didn't know that was a bet. <laughs> oh man. Uh Ooh. Packers and then the uh Cardinals. Yep. I the only one I missed was the Packers. Yeah, because I uh, missed uh, all of them. <laughs> Except the Steelers. Except I got that Steelers. right. The Steelers, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Well, it makes sense. You know, the Vikings end up losing to Atlanta, and then they just take the guy they traded for and traded him to fucking Baltimore. <laughs> Baltimore. Of like, yeah. All right. Well, uh, sorry, Joe Burrow. Yeah. But here's another <laughs> pass rusher on the team that just murdered you two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I. Oh my God! Let me ask you this before we get into making picks here. I assume okay. that's where we're heading. I would assume. Yeah. Um, what happens now? I don't think it's. I don't think this is going to happen today because okay. obviously the Browns and the Bengals play today. Uh huh. Baker Mayfield's getting shit on. Yeah. Of like, worst case scenario, they're going to pick up his his fifth year mm-hmm. and but and not rework contract. What happens if the Bengals beat them today? I mean, I I mean, I don't know. Are you gonna, is you gonna get benched for Case Keenum? I don't know. I mean, obviously Stefanski brought Keenum in because that's who he had when yeah, you know they were because I I don't I think Browns fans overreacted a bit last week. It, it was fucking Steelers. Yeah, what did you th- you honestly what thought you, you think were going to win? Happen? You honestly thought you were going to yeah. win, and and it was very apparent that Baker was hurt the whole time too. Yes, but it's also apparent that if they don't, if they can't run the football, they're not good. They can't play. Mm-mm. So that that was kind of my of like. It was boy. the same thing when he was with the Vikings. Yeah, it's a it's a play action team. Right. I can't run the football. I can't throw the football. Yeah, but then. You know, you also have a quarterback that's not tall enough to see over the middle, <laughs> and that if their first read's not there, uh-huh. he doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know what to do. Yep. Which is one thing I will give credit to. I do not. Uh, I never really speak highly of Sean McVay, mm-hmm. but I will hear because I heard the story of. Uh, oh, they're a fucking quarterback. They paid too much for golf. Golf. Mm-hmm. In their development. Yeah. And they talk about this across the league. You'll see right now that guys that ki- that make their first read and it's not there, it's panic mode. Mm-hmm. And he was seeing that in golf. And what he did is with the uh, the scout team defense mm-hmm. before practice gave them every play so that they could take away the first option. Golf never knew that, mm-hmm. but he gave them so that. Not one time would that first option be open. Yeah. And it forced him to, to go to two and three. Mm-hmm. It seems like a lot of teams like they, yeah. like here's, okay, we're going to fake this here. Mm-hmm. That's your read. Yeah. If that's not open, what are we doing? Yeah. And I, I've never ever thought that he was a bad coach. I just thought that his offense needed to evolve. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? I just thought that he thought his offense was, you know, gangbusters and the best. And and it was. It was, but for that year. But once they, well, once the Patriots showed you, oh, you only have to take away this one thing, uh-huh. and then they can't do anything. Exactly. So, I mean, 
But yeah. again, 30, you know, 32 mm -hmm. years old at that time. Exactly. Going against Bill Belichick. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> All right. You ready for picks? Let's do it. All righty. All righty. Let's go with. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Panther Saints. Uh, I'm going Saints. Uh, me too. Me too. Raiders Bucks. Bucks. My gut says Bucks. But I, I don't know. My butt my my yeah, my butt says Gucks. <laughs> That's what I about <laughs> said. <laughs> All righty. Um Let's see. Okay. This is this is for you. All right. Bengals Browns. Browns. Oh, you think the Browns are going to win? Yeah. Okay. All yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't I'll go Bengals on this one. Anything can happen. I I just honestly think one Joe Mixon's not playing. Yeah. Which Pretty not far. that they've used him much anyways. Yeah. But with the offensive line in the year that Miles Garrett's having, mm -hmm. Joe might die today. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it just you know from a hit or a helmet. Either. Oh, okay. <laughs> All righty. How many is that? Four? Three? Uh, three. Three? Okay. Uh, okay, this is, a this is a pretty good game on Monday Night Football. Bears and Rams. I don't know what to do with the Chicago Bears or I the Rams. Know, I know. I feel like they're the same team. Yeah. But you know what? Fuck it. Bears. I'm going to go Rams. I don't know why. I have no confidence in that pick. <laughs> I don't think the Bears are any good. Yeah. But again, they're also five and one. Uh huh. So I'm just gonna. All right. And then Sunday night, this is a tough one. Seahawks Cardinals. Yeah. Fucking Seahawks. I'm all. Out. I'm out on the fucking Cardinals. Okay. I'm out on Kyler Murray. You know I what? I'll go. A... I'll go Cardinals. I I still like them. It's the Kyler Murray thing's starting to bother me. Really? Yeah. His his height starting to bother you? Yeah. Okay. The fact that as you listen to like what he said with Baker Mayfield of the people breaking him down and now we're talking about guys that played in the fucking league mm -hmm. of just pay attention. His passes only go outside the numbers the because he can't see over the middle. Yeah. That's a problem in the NFL. It is. You get by in that college. Yeah. That's a problem in yeah. the NFL. Mm-hmm. I agree. So I, I don't. And actually, you know what? Honestly, more more than him being short, the mm -hmm. Chandler Jones thing is is a big problem for me. Yeah, for them. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just you know the yeah, guy. Yeah. The guy has four hundred sacks a year. I yeah. mean, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But again, nobody ever talks about him because he's been in Arizona for uh -huh. the last however many years. Well, he uh, has the most sacks since he's been in the league. So that's I mean, a big issue, yes. And nobody ever talks about nobody it. Nobody ever talks about it. But that's a big injury. Yes, it is. I know Belichick doesn't like to keep a lot of players, but do you know who he traded for, for that Chandler Jones? Uh-uh. It was an offensive lineman named Chance Warmack. I don't know who that is. Exactly, because he didn't play for the Patriots. Oh. He got hurt, and then they cut him. And that's... That was Chandler that was, Jones. That was Chandler Jones. Do you think John went in the locker room one time and tried to get Brady high and threatened to beat everybody up? I mean, is that what happened? I'm the baddest. Bill came in like that and he goes, yeah. nah, Bill, I'm the baddest motherfucker on the planet. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was the trade. It was Chan It was like a, it was Jones. They traded Chance Warmack and a pick. Yeah. I, don't, I don't remember who the pick was, but I'm like, because I was thinking like, because Chance, he was a good, he was a good guard at the time and they needed offensive linemen. Yeah. But at the same time, it was still Chandler Jones, and he was still good then when they right. traded. Because he'd only been in the league like three years. He was still on his rookie deal. <sighs> yeah. And both those brothers won Super Bowls, didn't they? Yeah. 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 Arthur with the Ravens, and then. Yeah. yeah. And then their other brothers, the baddest men on the planet, possibly. <laughs> yeah. What do you think as a parent? Yeah, I know. You know <laughs> yeah. I'm like, huh. well, we have three sons. Uh, two of them are Super Bowl champions <laughs> that actually, you know, yeah. that actually played. Like, they just weren't on the team. team like, yeah, they were, they're, you know, they're good. One's one of the best pass rushers there. And our third son, that was such a little bitch, he couldn't make the NFL, He's, might be the baddest fighter on the planet. planet. Yeah. 
Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. What the fuck, what man? The hell? What, where and you we... know he still gets his ass beat by his brothers. Oh, for sure. Because I mean, there's sure. one. They're just bigger than him. The oldest one. Arthur. Arthur is <laughs> like 6'5", <laughs> 320. They thought he might make a debut. Oh, really? Because they, they had some... They There's a... There's a super heavyweight class that everybody has. They just never use it. Oh, okay. That's over 265. Okay. The unlimited. Uh-huh. But they thought they might find him a fight at some <laughs> oh, point. okay. Time. Why not? I'd watch. I'd watch, I'd it, watch too. it, Watch that motherfucker whoop some ass. Now, since we're on that topic real quick, yeah. we might as well just talk about it real quick. Yeah. Uh, with Khabib. Yeah. Nurmagomedov yeah. versus Justin Gaethje. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't get to watch the fight. I, I mean, either. you did it in the afternoon when the Big Ten started. Mm-hmm. It's that's a tough watch. I if it would have been last week in the afternoon before the Big Ten, yeah, I probably would have watched it. <laughs> or if it would have been last night, uh huh, I would I would have watched it. Just yeah, timing two p.m. Yeah, two p.m. And tough. It, yeah, I uh I was close on my prediction because my yeah. buddies we were texting about who's he thinks going to win. One of my buddies said Khabib. By decision, I said Khabib yeah. in the in the third. Ah, I and I was yeah, I was like ah, damn it. Because everybody that I always talked to, like I kept trying to talk Gaethje up, mm-hmm. but I always knew Khabib, you always you know yeah, because Gaethje was was the only guy that yeah probably had the best chance with him. Mm-hmm. But it's still Khabib. Exactly, he that's what I was gonna, thinking you know, too. It, it yeah. was always he was always going to win. Uh huh. I was of the it's probably going to go to a decision. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. He that, said that decision. Was just my, yeah, I was like, I think he's going to get him in the third. Because I felt I always just felt like as dangerous as Gaethje is on his feet, that Khabib would get him down, and it'd be a boring ass fight, and he'd just kind of hold him down. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, I didn't think he'd put him to sleep. Yeah, because I didn't see it, but it seems like people saying that Gaethje was tapping out, but the ref never called it until he actually. <laughs> put him to sleep sleep. so (laughs) uh the other thing was uh khabib retiring yeah after that and i kind of get you like you've seen how he broke down after Mm -hmm. the fight first time he's been without his dad yep and basically just said i'm not doing this without my dad Dad, yeah which i mean hey hey i get it you don't need to prove anything no when that's the only person you ever trusted to train you he's not there anymore and it's your father yeah i get it i 100 percent get it and that was the, and then I seen on, you know, on Twitter, one of the first comments, he's just scared to fight McGregor again. Like, shut the fuck up. Get the fuck out of here. He ragged old Conor McGregor. Yeah, shut the like, fuck up, dude. Well, Conor McGregor's the only one that won a round. Well, I watched that fight and it was kind of a bullshit. Like you could have gave that round to Khabib. Uh-huh. Yeah, like it exactly. was just kind of like Conor got up from a takedown. That's uh-huh. about the only thing that happened. Then yeah. Khabib also sat Conor on his ass mm-hmm. with a straight right. <laughs> yeah. So. Let's hey, calm down. Shut the fuck up. Khabib is ugh. arguably pound for pound one of the greatest yeah. ever. Just be okay that Connor's fighting Poirier in January, even though they haven't signed that deal yet. But mm-hmm. that's what's happening. Yeah, that's probably going to be for the light heavyweight or the uh, lightweight championship. Are they doing it one fifty five? Yeah. Are they? Well, yeah. Cause Dana White doesn't make any fucking sense to do it at one seventy. Yeah. Because you're not one seventy pounders. Exactly. You're one fifty fivers. Yeah. <laughs> and now with Khabib retiring, vacating the title. Hmm. We got Conor McGregor, mm-hmm. who Dana's always wanted to fight for the belt. Yeah. Because there was no reason for him to fight Khabib unless he beat Poirier again. Yeah. Then you have Dustin Poirier, who's Dustin Poirier. Mm-hmm. I mean, probably going to be for the belt. Yeah. I, I, I would just have to imagine. Mm-hmm. And then the winner of that's probably either going to fight Ferguson or Gaethje. So, yeah. yeah. It actually opened the it's division it, it up, up a little, little bit. bit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is nice when those. Wh- it's. It sucks, but it's nice for uh, for our aspect as fans uh, to open it up a little bit because we don't want to keep seeing the same guys fight for the title all the time. You know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, we, we want to see different fighters. So when you open it up, it, him retiring probably made us happier as fans. We don't have to watch him fight somebody else again and probably win. We don't, you know what yeah, I mean? The we only thing I'm upset with is I'm never getting to see the Ferguson fight. Mm, yeah. Because, I, you know, I know what I said about Gaethje. But Ferguson was always a different... Like, Gaethje beat the fuck out of Ferguson Mm -hmm. on his feet. On his feet, yeah. Now, Ferguson is the most dangerous son of a bitch you've ever seen from his back. Uh Uh-huh. So that's... I'm upset that, you know, they tried five times and we Mm -hmm. never got to see that fight. Yeah. But, you know, it is what it is. But it opens the division up. But, you know. Are we going to get another heavyweight one? Are we going to get a, a heavyweight fight at anybody soon? Do you know? Have you heard? Francis Ngannou is all pissed off. Okay. Because. In his, in his delicate voice. Yeah. Basically. 
waiting on Stipe. Ah, okay. And Francis has only fought one time in the last 18 months, and it lasted 20 seconds. <laughs> so basically, he wants a fight. Yeah. And, he, you know, but it's like, well, do you want to fight for the championship or do you want to fight? Mm-hmm. Because I'm sure they'll book one for you. Exactly. Because if you get beat by whoever. Yeah. They're going to give John Jones and Stipe the go. Because uh-huh. that's what Stipe wants anyways. Because yeah. he already beat your ass once. Uh huh. He doesn't want to have and to Stipe do it again. Stipe probably wants the big payday against yeah. John Jones so he can retire. Yeah. So exactly. that, that's kind of the. Mm-hmm. But you're probably going to end up there looking February, March. Gotcha. And then John Jones is just trying to gain weight. And he'll take on the winner because mm-hmm. John Jones can't fight at heavyweight unless it's for a title. You just mm-hmm. can't. Yeah. He, yeah. It's you stupid. can't come fight a contenders match. Exactly. I mean, yeah. It's you just can't John do Jones. it. It's John Jones. <laughs> exactly. I mean, yeah. So that that's probably where we're at. And then uh, Adesanya, he always said his next fight was going to be Cannoneer. Mm-hmm. Well, Whitaker beat Cannoneer last night. So you got to assume does Whitaker get a rematch against Adesanya? Yeah. That, that would be my guess. Unless with all the smoke that they've been throwing that Izzy goes up to 205 to either to fight Jan. Cause he, gotcha. he did send those tweets out of, mm-hmm. would y'all care if I went up to 205 and took that belt real quick? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, there's that too. Oh yeah. <coughs> yeah. Just so. some good stuff. Yeah. I just hate that. It's so expensive to watch the fights. Yeah. Cause I would love to watch the fights, but I just have a hard time spending $65. Yes. For only one. And legitimately, yeah. I only really want to watch one, maybe two fights on the card. Right. For you know the most I mean? part, that's yes. how they The how only one I would say where I actually bought it was that very first one for COVID, where it was Gaethje and Ferguson. And yeah. That was that card that was, that was just, badass. And then the other one that drives the numbers is Connor. Mm-hmm. Because everybody finds it. But re- mo- the thing that happens when Connor is on the card is the rest of the card is shit. Because they're not, they don't want to pay anybody else on that exactly. card. Exactly. So, because that was a weird. Connor wanted to fight in December. Mm-hmm. But here is the problem that you had is the date that was opening to f- December that only had uh, oh had one title fight on it, and it was uh, yeah. the, the ladies' title fight. Oh, what's her name? Oh, the the really good one. Yeah, no, no, her name. It's a one thirty five and one forty five champ. Yeah. She's on the. She was the only title fight on the card because gotcha. they lost the the Usman fight. Uh-huh. So Connor wanted that date. Mm-hmm. Now the problem with that is because Connor makes his money. You know, you're yeah. gonna pay him whatever he wants because Connor McGregor. Uh huh. When you win a belt in the UFC, mm-hmm. that contract already met, automatically has built into it. When you're the belt holder, you get pay per view points. Gotcha. So if Connor goes on that card, you're going to have a title match be a co-main event. event. Yeah. But she's going to make so much money mm-hmm. because Connor McGregor's Gregor. on the card and they got to pay out her her percentage yeah. of the points of the pay-per-view. Gotcha. And they're never going to do that. Yeah. Amanda Nunes. And uh cuz they were like, well, well Amanda Nunes is going to be pissed off if she's a champ and she's a co-main event. It's like uh, yeah, because Conor McGregor's on the card and she gets all that money. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. she's going to be fine with it. Uh-huh. So that's why they never did that. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. A little inside baseball yeah. on the fighting. Yeah. I don't even know if you can use that term anymore, inside baseball. Because <laughs> everybody's like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Nobody knows anything about baseball. Uh-huh. They're still playing, by the way. Did you know? <laughs> yeah. I watched. Uh, I watched that incredible ending on Twitter this morning. I didn't even see it. Uh, is a walk-off error. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, the Rays hit one little Texas leaguer, drops right over the bat there, over the infield, scoops it up, misses for the Dodgers, then picks it up, throws it in. As he's throwing it in, the runner off a third comes in and trips and falls for the Rays. (laughs) The catcher goes to slot, you know, like as he's coming, he does like the turnaround real fast to try to tag him. The ball slips out of his glove. The guy gets back up and slides in for the win. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. Here is your commercial for why we would like them to do steroids again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. The guy trips and falls rounding third. Oh, my God. And then sees it, sees the ball go flying out of the guy's glove, and he just gets up and slides yeah. in for the win. Yeah, crazy. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's baseball. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. You got anything else? I do not. 
We've made our picks. Yep. We've voiced our opinions. Always. Most of them wrong. Always. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure we piss people off. <laughs> of course. Maybe. Love you actually, guys. Actually, we didn't really say anything controversial today. I think no. actually we were very positive to everybody. Yeah. I got another positive thing, and we're going to end it on this one. Okay. <laughs> and it's a Jets thing. <laughs> and it's just a kind of a jokey take that I'd had of everybody shits on the Jets. Yep. But I think maybe the Jets ownership is quite fucking brilliant. <laughs> okay. That, hear me out. They saw Trevor Lawrence coming. Uh-huh. And they knew the only way they could get the the number one pick was to hire Adam Gase. <laughs> guaranteeing <laughs> that they would get Trevor Lawrence because he can go back to college again. We just won't fire him until next year. Uh huh. And then we'll get him. We again. gotcha. <laughs> so on that note, uh, the jets are geniuses. Got it. See you people. Uh, white side.